I'm sorry, hindi pa tapos yung uh, travel vlog natin kaya magbigla ang vlog muna tayo. Pero hindi lang to basta bigla ang vlog. Ha. Magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang unboxing. Huwag na natin patagalin. Simulan natin sa unang i-unbox natin. Napaka-special na item ito. Yan, kung nakita nyo yung uh, Dijo knife na yan, yan din ang gagamitin natin sa pag-unbox ng second item natin na mapapanood nyo na now na! Okay, yan ang dalawang unboxing natin uh, for this vlog. Right now, uh, itong iPhone XS Max, 10S. Itong iPhone XS Max, ito mismo yung ginagamit natin. Ito ang camera natin ngayon. Ito gagamitin natin para i-discuss naman yung uh, isang napaka-importanteng tao. Hindi lang sa akin ha, kundi uh, para sa industriya ng pelikula, sa industriya ng animation, sa industriya na rin ng Disney. Tanong, kilala nyo ba si Mark Hen? Kung hindi, okay lang. In fact, maraming mga tao, hindi lang mga Pinoy ha, ang hindi nakakakilala sa kanya. Next question, kilala nyo ba si Ariel ng Little Mermaid, si Belle ng Beauty and the Beast, si Princess Jasmine ng Aladdin, si Simba sa Lion King, si Mulan, o kaya eh, si Tiana ng Princess and the Frog. Kung may nakikilala kayo sa mga Disney characters na binanggit ko at napasaya nila kayo, si Mark Hen ang dapat nating pasalamatan dahil malaki ang kinalaman niya sa mga characters na yan. Siya ang supervising animator ng mga movies na pinagbidahan nila. Ibig sabihin, siya yung nakatutok sa magiging itsura ng karakter. Yung iba't ibang pag-emote nila, kung paano silang umiti, umiyak, magalit. Yung tindig nila, kung paano sila tumayo, umupo, maglakad, tumakbo, ano, lahat. Basta, gets nyo? Okay, moving on. Noong July 28, nabigyan ako ng chance ng Disney Philippines para interviewin si Mark Hen. Doon sa mga nakakakilala sa kanya, siya yung ano eh, siya yung uh, uh, rock star pagdating sa industriya ng animation. Isa siya sa mga nire-respeto, iniidolo, isa siya sa mga uh, mapinaka-astig pagdating sa animation. Nung pumasok siya doon sa room, medyo... <laughs> Medyo kinilig ako. Alam mo yun, para siyang yung, yung cool na cool na uncle mo na galing abroad na gusto gusto mo makasama palagi. As soon as nakaupo kami, binigay ko agad sa kanya yung, uh, yung 15 minute sketch na ginawa ko. Yung ko sa Instagram. At lalo akong kinilig nung, nung naramdaman ko na pa parang nagustuhan niya. Actually, nung natapos yung interview, nakita ko pa siya dun sa, ano, sa may dining anyway, area. Yeah. Abang ko bakain siya, nandun dun sa tabi niya yung drawing ko. Hindi ko alam, ah, paglalagay niya ba ng pickles na tinanggal niya sa hamburger. O baka pagpupunasan niya ng kamay o nabibig parang napkin. Ewan ko kung ano trip niya. Huwag naman sana, no? Actually, hindi ko alam 
ano talagang gagawin niya dun sa drawing ko na yun. Pero, alam mo yun, nangangarap ako na one day magkaroon ako ng chance na makapunta dun sa bahay niya o makapanood ng isang interview niya at makita ko na nakadisplay yung drawing ko somewhere doon sa background niya. Eh, libre naman mga Arabe, hayaan yun na. Anyway, nagpunta nga pala dito sa Pilipinas si Mr. Mark Hen para i-promote yung uh, part 2 nung Wreck-It Ralph na movie na ang title is Ralph Breaks the Internet. Supervising animator din si Mr. Mark Hen dito sa movie na to. Nalalabas ang mga sinehan sa November 21. So kung fan kayo ng original na Wreck-It Ralph na movie, siguradong magugustuhan nyo tong Ralph Breaks the Internet. Here's the rest of my interview with Mark Hen. Enjoy! Animation, is this, is this everything that you ever wanted to do? Uh, yeah, this is this has uh, been a boyhood dream for me. Uh, because where you are right now, what you're doing, it's it's, it's what I wanted when I was a kid. And as as a kid, when you were starting, are you familiar with the the term uh, starving artist? Oh, uh, absolutely. Did, did you ever go through that phase? And and what are your thoughts on that? Well, I really can't say that I was a starving artist uh -huh. because I came uh, through college, and my last two years uh, before your college period was at the Arts, uh -huh. where I was studying uh, in the Disney animation program. Part of the reason why that program was set up was to you know, fill the ranks of the dwindling uh, animation department as the older artists from the first generation uh -huh. were retiring and some had passed away already. So the studio was looking to get new blood. So for me, I you know, had done my two years at CalArts, uh -huh. and at the end of each year they review the students films yeah so my film um, was reviewed and they liked it and so basically they hired me uh, after my second year at Cal Arts and so I've, I've been there for 38 years now yeah, so that's I, the thing I didn't about have a starving artist period uh -huh, like, like uh -huh. some people do and I'm, I'm very very thankful for that okay uh, what is the main difference between cartoon and animation well I guess the biggest difference is you can think of cartoons as primarily still, uh -huh. one image, you know, like an illustration. Okay. And animation, of course, means movement. So okay. So there's, there's movement involved, so it's moving cartoons. So you can be both a, a cartoonist and an animator at the same time? You could, uh -huh. yeah, or uh -huh. either or. Cartooning, or that term, cartoon, actually is a very old, old term. Yeah. So, you know, Michelangelo uh, made cartoons, which were essentially preliminary sketches and drawings that he would do for his paintings or his sculptures. They were called cartoons. Uh -huh. so that's where that term comes from. Okay, now that's clear now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So uh -huh. when animating characters, it's, it's not enough to just know how to draw, right? Well, uh, that's certainly a part of it. I mean, with, um, like I was talking with uh, a group today, I said animators are primarily actors. Uh -huh. You would appreciate that yeah. because but the difference is, you're on the screen, people uh -huh. are seeing your face, Yes. they're not seeing my face, they're seeing what I'm drawing, and so my drawing is a means to an end, which is the performance. Uh -huh. you know. And I see a lot of videos of animators having a mirror, uh, yeah. always beside them or in front of them. Uh, no animator can live without a mirror, right? Well, <laughs> you can live without a mirror, but yeah, it's certainly a very helpful tool, uh -huh. because it just goes back to the idea of finding some kind of a reference, expression. you know, like what, you know, you feel it, you feel an expression, uh -huh. but so you just make, like, what does that look like? I can feel it, but I can't, yeah. so you just uh -huh. find a mirror and you go, oh, okay. Translate like, immediately. Uh -huh. Yeah, it gives you a, a quick, quick read as to what that expression looks like. Uh -huh. But you've designed a lot of uh, characters. Which, which ones are easier to design? Is, is it the good guys or the bad guys? Oh, I think it, it, it just depends, really. Um, and which one is more fun? Well, some people have felt villains are kind of fun in, in some <laughs> respects, but um, I tend to have been uh, cast on a lot of lead characters, uh -huh. and I find them extremely challenging and very gratifying because if you look at my you know, uh, career and the characters that I've done, they all tend to be a leading character uh -huh. versus the sidekick uh -huh. or the villain. I've done some villain scenes, but I was never cast to be the villain. I, I don't know if you've heard uh, of Phil Tippett's uh, remark about the, the Jurassic Park 3D animation uh -huh. where it says like well, we're going to lose our jobs when he saw the uh, animation of the T-Rex uh -huh. in broad daylight. You, Realizing what digital technology can do, did you ever feel the same way at any point? Um, I suppose. I mean, because I, I think, you know, that's just kind of human nature mm -hmm. when there's a change in, in the life and 
change in technology yeah. that directly you know Effects. correlates with uh -huh. your job. Uh -huh. I think that certainly is is just kind of a human reaction. Uh -huh. You know, as we we tried to adapt, and uh, some have adapted much better than others. I adapted. I worked on one CG film, um, and then had the opportunity to continue doing some more 2D hand-drawn uh -huh. films. But then now my career is adapting to, you know, working with the younger artists and passing on the, the head and the heart issues of animation. Yeah. You know, as opposed to just the technology. Uh -huh. Because that's just a tool. That's you know that's just replacing right. this. Uh -huh. But what happens here and what happens here still the same. It's still the same. Uh -huh. Exactly. Did you ever think that the characters you designed would one day transition into live action or three D animation? No, not really. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, yeah. Take Bell for example. Yeah, I, I certainly never would figure that they would have um, created a uh, live action film based on that. Not uh -huh. that you know. I mean, we've done some animated films that were, you know, live action films prior to us, like, uh -huh. you know, uh, Robin Hood, for example. Yeah. You know, we did a animated version back in the 70s, which, of course, you know, uh, probably took some inspiration from the Errol Flynn movie. So uh -huh. I, it's kind of gone both ways, but they seem to be doing a lot more of it these days. Yeah, they are. <laughs> of a, what they call a reimagining of our animated classics. Uh -huh. What would be, uh, what would you like to see next as a live action? Probably more curious than anything to see what they do with Mulan. Oh, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> that of all of them, I think has a good uh, chance of translating well. Uh huh. But again, that story has been told. I think there's been, I think, at least one or more Chinese yeah. films that were created back maybe in the 50s and 60s uh -huh. based on the story of Mulan. So uh -huh. it's not new. But our version of it, it'll be interesting to see what they what they do with it and how they adapt it. So let's go to the uh, the movie on Ralph Breaks the Internet. It, it has a weird title. Uh, right? It was pointed out by Ralph in one of the plugs. Right, it was uh -huh. in one of the trailers. They said, wait a minute, shouldn't it be Ralph <laughs> yeah. Breaks the Internet? You know, like Vanellope says, after all, he is Wreck-It Ralph. Yep, uh -huh. And yes, who he's talking to. That was funny. To, <laughs> yeah, yes, the character, yes, who he's talking to says, nah, it's, you know, it'll be fine. Ralph Breaks the Internet's going to work just fine. Are you comfortable with it, though? I think so. Okay. I know this the inclusion of Japanese anime style in a few Disney 3D uh, titles. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph, for example, has some uh, Japanese characters. Some At this video. point in the genre, uh, who do you think is influencing who? Is it traditional animation or Japanese animation? That's, that's a good question. I, I wouldn't say either one is necessarily influencing the other. I think uh -huh. there's a mutual admiration yeah. for both. Studios. I mean, for Disney to recognize yeah, Studio Ghibli. Exactly. Uh -huh. Well, and I think that's. I think there's just a, a mutual admiration. Yeah. Uh, so, would you consider Ralph Breaks the Internet to be the like the perfect uh, fusion animation technique project so far, including the Japanese anime and? Yeah, I think so. Cause so far. So far, because it's going to include, you know, as they go into the internet, some interesting styles uh -huh. and, and different things as they, you know experience different sites and things along the way so it should be a, a one of those open to a bridges lot of a gateway uh, yeah. on anything uh -huh. you have to say about Ralph Briggs are there any Easter eggs oh I think there's a lot there's of a lot eggs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean I, you can't you can't tell it you know a show like this and go to the internet and uh -huh. not have yeah a lot of Easter eggs, so. in the tradition of Marvel too is is there like a I don't know if you're spoiling it or what, but is there any like post credit scenes -credit that we should? Scene? I haven't heard. Okay. I have, I have my okay. own idea of what I would like to do with the post credit <laughs> scene, but I don't know. I haven't heard officially if there's any kind of a post credit scene. Man, we're going to have to stay that after the fun. credits. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fun. There you go. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> this my has pleasure. been. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And, man, uh, we're looking forward to watching Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, uh, comes, in the, comes out in the States uh, November 21st. Okay, soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Hen, everyone. You're welcome. <laughs>